Hey guys, welcome to the very first episode of Screen Addicts, the show where we talk all things TV and movies. So usually when you see a horror movie, you expect some kind of monster or serial killer to be killing all the inhabitants of the movie. This time around, however, he kind of plays with that expectation with a different kind of assassination. So Zach, what did you think? What you're saying about there not being a monster is not true. There is a monster, and it's white people. It's yeah, I, I can see that. I suppose, <laughs> especially with the way like our history has been in this country. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have a history so long with the whole black and white thing that yeah, it could be a fifty foot monster basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we'll, we'll get there in a second. So it's crazy. This movie it should not be somebody's first movie. Like I don't know how this Jordan Peele's di like directorial directorial debut. Like, yeah, how is this the first thing he made? It's, it's incredible the way it's shot, the way it's directed, the, the the subtleties all the way throughout. Yeah, it's wild. When I was watching it, it felt like a really long episode of Key and Peele, but a much more thought out and serious one. But don't get me wrong, there are funny moments in this movie, but the way it's put together, it doesn't feel like a comedy per se. It definitely has some suspense in it. Yeah, like if you think about it, it's really easy to imagine this as a Key and Peele skit where it's just like silly. Uh, like yeah. you know, like the idea is oh. White people are taking black people's bodies. How crazy and silly that couldn't happen. Like his movie. best friend. Right. He's just like, you know, make you a sex slave. And yeah, I was exactly. like, oh my god, that's too funny. As opposed to in this movie, it's like, no, that's a real thing and it's horrifying. You should be worried about it. It's not big. <laughs> yeah, and don't get me wrong, like, he doesn't hit you over the head with it where you're like, wow, this is stupid. Like, there is that character, his best friend, who plays that comedic relief, who kind of like sits with you and like, this is kind of absurd. But then you watch it from the main character, Chris's part, and it's just. It's really happening to him, and it's horrifying. Right, like, it does hit you over the head with it in a way, because you know, like, okay, this movie is about microaggressions and racial subtext and systemic racism and whatnot, yeah. but not in a way, like, it doesn't feel like an after-school special, like, you should be nice to black people, and black people should be nice. It's not like that. It's not that simple. Yeah, and that's something I definitely want to hit on, because you can tell when he wrote that script, he has the intention of really bringing up the subject and being that he is of both white and black descent. Mm. He, he kind of really took it in a unique way that felt like only Jordan Peele really could. Right. And that racial subtext is huge. There's so many examples in the film. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, one of my favorite ones was the black mold thing. When he's walking past the closet, and he's like, hey, what's in the closet? Like, oh, there's just black mold in there. Mm -hmm. I love that they use that as, like, code talk for saying that that's where we're going to switch out your brain. Right. Stop making you black and make you white. Yeah. Like, it's just like, whoa, that's, I love that. I mean, if you're watching this, you've seen the movie, but we should probably back up. Just a little bit. Yeah. So Chris is the main character, and he has a white girlfriend. He's going to meet the family for the first time. And uh, at first, it seemed like there's microaggressions, and they're kind of being weird about her having a black boyfriend. They're a little off, and it's not the usual, like, oh, your boyfriend's black. Okay. It's yeah, it's, more like. It's nothing that direct. Yeah. It's, it's more like, my man, like, trying to, like, do that code switching thing where you're, you think you need to talk to black people differently. Right. Or I need to talk to this person this way because that's what I learned in the media. And, like, that's what they do with this movie at first, and it's not just like, oh, white people are evil right away. It starts off with those microaggressions, those things that we say every day without thinking that you're like, oh, that's not a big deal, but no, it is. Yeah, you should it, say that. it does start innocent enough, and he does a really good job of slowly like descending into a more sinister uh, like way of approaching those aggressions. Right. And anyone who's seen this, uh, like who's maybe a person of color, like you can kind of like relate to those situations, even from the get go. Mm -hmm. The scene where he's in the suburb and he's just walking down the street, like a suburb to anybody else who lives in a neighborhood like that, you're like just perfectly safe, safest place on earth. No, if you're a white person living in the suburb. Yeah, with, I, I didn't want to go there, but yeah, I guess we're going there. Yeah, so it's like when you're walking there, that scene where he's like, I'm just going to turn around, I'm going to ignore this, that's a very real thing that I've experienced myself when I have like, I'm not maybe wearing the right clothes, maybe I'm wearing like baggy pants and like a beanie because it's cold. Mm -hmm. It's a genuine fear, and he really played that up. I was like, I was in complete suspense during that scene. Right, yeah, I mean, and. We talked about this earlier, like, I have a totally different experience, because I'm not black, I don't have black experience, and I can't say that, oh, I've been afraid to walk in the suburbs, because that's, like, normalized for me, that's okay to do that. That's true. But, for me, the movie has a different fear. Like, for you, we, you said with your girlfriend, uh, ex-girlfriends in the past. Yes. You Talk about that a little bit. So, I, I've dated a couple of women who were white, and going to meet their parents, I do have that, that experience that Chris has at first. Where it's like, hey, how you doing? And they're like, oh yeah. And they start talking to me about Mexican food and like gardening mm -hmm. and things that like, like Mexican food, yeah, everyone knows about, but like gardening and things like that. I'm like, why are you bringing that up? I don't know anything about it, but you go along with it just to be polite because mm -hmm. it's your girlfriend's parents. Mm -hmm. But 
there are times, you know, like in the movie where you're like, you could easily see it descending into this ridiculous situation where they want you to conform. Because that's basically the whole premise of the movie is that by the end of the movie, you find out that the whole reason this family is this way is because they lure black people in to swap out their identity by like literally taking their brain out and inserting a white brain so that they can operate as a black person on the surface, but that has quote-unquote white personalities. Right, I mean, you're taking what they think is the, the best part of being black, you know, like the physical aspect of it. They're like, that's what I want. I don't want the black brain, that's garbage. Like, it's like right. the super horrible objectification that, that's involved, and it's taken to like an actual symbolic level instead of just being like hinted at. And he comment, the commentary in the movie about it is so well done, though, because you're looking at it as like, this is like the ideal situation mm -hmm. that slave owners would have wanted back in the day to erase the the quote-unquote like negro culture from from a human being you know erasing who they are and conforming them into this like white mm -hmm. standard and it's pretty horrifying to see it when you see those examples in the movie like mm -hmm. the guy who got snatched the jazz player mm -hmm. and when he's like wait a second i know this guy i've met this guy before and then he kind of like uh he snaps him out of the, the trance that he's in essentially and he's warning his friend he's like get out like they're gonna do something horrible to you. Right. And he just does such a good job on that. And I think it's a really good example, or a really good point that you bring up about that, depending on who you are, you're gonna see this movie differently than say, you or I might, just yeah. depending on who well, you are. Well, I mean, are. you and I had a different experience in the movie right away, because like, I am not a black guy, I don't have a black experience, I can't claim that. And I don't wanna make a movie about that, about white people right. at all, like that's, that's right. not the intention. But there's a different fear for me because I can't relate to that. I can't be afraid of being in the you know suburban area um, of talking the wrong way of you know not not presenting properly. Yeah. But I have this fear of like fellow white people, whether it's it's family or or friends or whatever. There's always this like secret fear that they're going to be actually racist. Yeah. And like loop you in on that and be like, hey, so how do you feel about those blankety blanks? Oh, like, because that's a bunch of assumptions right there. One, you're assuming that you can say that and I'm comfortable with it. Two, you're probably assuming that I agree with you because why would you say it otherwise? And so in this movie, like, especially with uh, uh, Allison Williams' character, which oh my is Chris's God. girlfriend, yeah. the whole time I was like, okay, so the other white people are evil, but she's not gonna be right because you know, like, she's good, she's nice, their relationship is sweet, and you really wanna desperately believe that this white person's not racist. They're not gonna be that, right? Yeah. That and that's the moment that freaks me out the most because. Boom. Yep, she is. That, Everything's horrible. That really hurt because Allison Williams, like in that movie, she was like my saving grace because the whole time I'm just like, dude, awesome, right? Mm -hmm. And then she slowly starts to turn in that scene where she can't find the keys. And I'm like, please, you're like my last hope. Yeah. Don't be racist. So I kind of like, for like a second, I got, I understood what you were saying. Right. You were really hoping that she wouldn't be the one mm -hmm. to be just like all the other ones. And, and there it is. Yeah, like, that, that that's the fear for me is I can, I can see Chris's anxieties and I can like empathize somewhat, but I can't put myself in those shoes completely because that's just not the world that I live in. Yeah, you know? and that just speaks to like the, what Jordan Peele did in this movie. It's just, it came out really well. And I love yeah. the way it ends too. Like mm -hmm. he, usually in a horror movie too, like the character like is forced to kill everyone to survive, you mm -hmm. know, to kill all of his like attackers and stuff. And he literally gets pushed to the brink for that point. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot that happens first before that happens. And it really plays up the energy because by the end of the movie, you have all these dead white people in the house, including one on the floor, and you have this black dude covered in blood and pitch of night, and you see a cop car come. Yeah. My heart stopped. I was like, oh shit, yeah, man, like, this can't end this way. Like, yeah. And she even plays up to it too. Allison Williams was like, uh, help. Uh, I was yeah. like, no, he's going to end up yeah. in jail. I was like, are we, we going to do like, uh, we're going to go back to uh, Night of the Living Dead? Are we going to have that? Right. Like, next? I, I was, I was like, Totally seen that. I was like, please don't do it. And then they subvert even that, which is nuts. Yeah, the man. If there's one thing that really happens in this movie, like the keyword is subversion. Like, yeah. All your expectations. Like Jordan Peele just plays with every single one that you have about race. Yeah. Uh, just it's it's crazy, man. It's a really good movie. We I highly recommend it. Mm. I'm sure you do too. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a big horror guy, but like every horror movie does not need to be about ghosts and zombies and stuff like that. Like, yeah, that's, that's or not, like straight up murder and gore. Right. It's not necessarily realistic. You can't put yourself in those shoes. So for something to actually be about racism and like actual theories that people have and can't get away from. You can't turn that off. I can turn off the monster on the screen, but I can't turn off racism. You know what I mean? That's true. As much as we all wish we could. Yeah. So like to actually make that the subject of your horror movie and nail it completely is, is necessary. Do you think there'll be a sequel? I hope not. Like why would you make a sequel of the movie? I mean, 
Allison Williams' character was a solo open eyed. So um, I, I mean, I I just I guess maybe the movie was just so good. I kind of hope there's more at some point. Yeah, I'm just excited to see what Jordan Peele does next. We, he, I was reading recently. He says he has four more thrillers that he has in mind. He's just like already working on. So bring them on. I say. Exactly, it's gonna be great. So well. Thanks for watching us, guys. Uh, if you, what did you guys think about the movie? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Uh, I guess we'll see you guys next time. But you guys can officially count this episode. Motherfucking handle. TSA. TSA.